Hi guys and welcome to another Big Ideas video. Now normally when I'm delivering these videos I'm stood over here but today I'm going to go over to the computer because today's big idea is something that's easiest to explain in Scratch itself. So let's get started. I hope you're beginning to realize by now that when we're writing programs, it's really important to be precise the instructions that we use, making sure we use the right instructions and then we put them in the right order to achieve our aims. And I hope you're also beginning to understand that it's also important to make sure that we make our programs easy to understand by adding in those comments to them so that if we come back to them in the future, we can understand why we use the instructions that we did. Now in this video, we're going to look at another way that programmers can make their programs easier to understand, but also much simpler to create. The idea that I'm going to explain is how programmers use what are normally commonly called procedures, but which in Scratch are actually called blocks instead. To start with, I've already built an algorithm in Scratch, which you can see on the screen right now. This algorithm uses one of the extensions in Scratch for the pen. Those extensions are down in this bottom left-hand corner. But first of all, work together with the person sitting next to you, or if you like, as a class, to discuss what you think this algorithm will do. Look carefully each of the instructions, use what you know about X and Y coordinates, and try to imagine what will happen when it is run. And we'll come back in a moment, run it, and see whether you were right. Okay, let's run the algorithm now by hitting the green flag and see what it does. So yes, when I hit the green flag, hopefully as a group, you worked out it was gonna draw a square. Um, pen goes down, X changes by 50, that's a movement to the right, Y by minus 50, that's down, X by minus 50, that's to the left, and Y by 50, that's up. So it draws a square. Now if I wanted to draw more than one square, I could do this, I could take this algorithm here, I could right click, I could duplicate it, and I could stick it on the bottom like that. But you can see that if we do that, our code, our algorithms become increasingly difficult to understand, loads of commands and very complicated to work out what's going on. So instead, what programmers like to do is they like to use what are called procedures. Uh, and in Scratch, those are known as blocks. So I'm gonna get rid of that second half here. And instead of doing it that way, I'm gonna to go to my blocks, I'm gonna make a block and I'm gonna call it square like this. And I'm now telling Scratch that this algorithm from now on is gonna be called square. If I take that square command and put it underneath the when green flag is clicked event hat block, that means that when the green flag is clicked, it's simply going to run that square command and then run this whole algorithm over here. Let's just erase the pen and let's give that a go. And you can see that it draws the square. And because I've defined this, I've told Scratch what this procedure is, I can draw more than one square. So I could, for example, draw one square, and then because I don't want it to draw over the top of the last one, I could move X and Y a little bit. So let's just change X by 50 and Y by 50. And draw a second square. Let's go again, clear the pan. So we get a first square, and then we get a second square. Or I could take that and I could put it inside a repeating block like this. Let's change that to a five. Okay, take a look at that algorithm see if you can work out as a group what you think is going to happen when I run that. Okay, let's give it a go. Yep, I'm now gonna get five squares. Now, one of the other advantages of using procedures, or again, in Scratch, blocks, is that if I make a change to what it means to be a square, that change will happen every single time. So for example, one example here might be, 
I'm going to put into my square command, change the pen color by 10 each time. Let's clear the pen. Let's bring our cap back down to the corner. And if we now run this, every time the square command is called, the pen color is going to change. So if we run the command now, what you'll see is that we get different colored squares. So using blocks is an excellent way of making our programs easier to write and easier to understand. And again, it's similar to the ways that we use algorithms in our everyday lives. We have all sorts of blocks, if you like, in our minds for algorithms that we use regularly. A block like walk to school actually contains thousands of instructions. Move your left foot forward, move your right foot forward, move your left foot forward, stop to check the road, cross when it's safe, left foot, right foot, and so on. But that single command, walk to school, just like that single command now that we've created of square, is enough to get all of those little instructions happening. So we're now going to use a block for something that we'll be able to use again and again as we develop our Flappy Parrot game, and that is creating all of the ways the parrot can crash and fall to the ground. I'm very sorry, Mr. Parrot. Ow! Let's go. Ow!